I've been fishing the Yarra River near my home for some time. This is in the Melbourne suburbs of Eltham, Ivanhoe, Heidelberg, and I'd caught small fish before, but I decided I'd do a lot better. So I've started a campaign, a carp fishing campaign, to see just how big a carp I can catch in these waters. This is the first one I caught, two to three kilos, and I was going to improve on this to see just how big they can be. Hi, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au and in this carp fishing campaign my goal is to get the biggest fish possible, the biggest carp. So what I'll do is I'm going to the, the same spot each time. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that I keep some consistency. I need to work out fishing one single spot how to fish it best. I've chosen a spot that is pretty good, that looks pretty fishy to me, so hopefully it'll have the fish in it. I'll use different rigs, different baits to see what gets the best fish. The only thing that will be consistent in all of this will be I'll use the same rods and reels. The, the rigs will be different, hook sizes, baits, etc. But the rods will be my best red fishing rod and the honor reel that goes with that. So it's a 3000 size reel, 3000 series reel. It'll have five to six kilo line on it. I need line that that's strong so that uh, I can pull fish out of the, the snags. And there's plenty of those. Uh, the other thing is that the rod, my best red fishing rod, this is a, a 2.1 meter graphite rod. So it's nice and it's stiff. I'll be using the top section. It comes with two top sections. I'll use the, the heavier top section to go with that heavier line. And with that, I should be able to deal with just about any fish that I catch there. So that's my plan. Let's see how it goes. When I found this spot, I was looking for a, a slow moving stretch of water. The river's got a reasonable flow on the far side, but in close here, the water slows right down. And that's what I was looking for, an area where it was slow and it was more likely for the fish to hold. Uh, to my left there, you can see the current is a bit heavier, but certainly in front of me and about five meters out, the water was slowing right down. This is where fish would hold, this is where food would drop. So that's why I put my bait in. The rig I was using was really simple. Had a bean sinker on there with a line stop. Tied to that, tied to my main line, was a fluorocarbon leader, size six hook, and a nice big worm on it. European nightcrawler worm. Fish in here really like that. And I was only casting out just onto the edge where the faster water met the slow water. And then I was gonna throw some burley in there just to attract the fish. Now the other rig was a bit different. I modeled a great big piece of burley around one of my homemade sinkers, one of the sinkers that I'd put in a previous video. These sinkers uh, have two lines coming off them, two short lines, one at the top, one at the bottom. I had a size six hook on each one of those lines and plenty of corn uh, for the fish to take. And the burley itself I made really stiff. I added my aniseed essence to it this is one of the attractants in my spice rack that I've found really effective in bringing in those fish. And by making the burley really stiff, I knew it was going to stay on there for a while and adding the essence to it, I knew that it was going to put off a scent into the water that hopefully would bring those fish in. And once again, I wasn't casting out too far. I just wanted a few rod lengths out, just far enough away so that there's a little bit of depth in the water and it wasn't really close under my feet where the fish might see me. Every five to 10 minutes, all I did was throw in a few grains of corn. That got some food going into the water. The smells that it gave off and the movement in the water was going to attract those fish. I was putting it out where my baits were, both with the worm and with the corn. Sometimes the best places to fish are not the easiest to get to. Here I'm on a uh, bit of an incline. I'm standing right next to my, my rods. You can't see, but there's very, very little room behind me. And the slope was quite extreme. So that if I, if I got up suddenly, I might even slip into the water. Um, there'd been some rain, so it was a little bit muddy, which made it worse for standing on. And just to get to this spot, there was a fairly steep incline. So even getting down to where I'm sitting now meant that there was always a chance that uh, I might just fall in.
there wasn't room for much gear so I had to travel really light the two things that I bought one was this little spade and that helped me sort of dig out an area so that I could sit also it helped me dig out an area so I could put my feet at times and the other is this really fine rubber mat and it doesn't look it but you fold it over much and it is quite comfortable it fits easily into your bag and it's easy enough to carry but it's better than sitting on the wet earth so having that with me made it much more comfortable over an hour i'd been fairly steadily throwing in little bits of corn the odd worm sometimes a little tiny ball of burley to see if i could attract the fish and then all of a sudden i get this splash out there which is a carp that and they do this quite frequently they seem to to breach or come out of the water over the top of where they're feeding and this was right over where i'd cast in my bait at least i knew then that i probably attracted the fish into the area whether i could get a bite or not was another thing shortly afterwards it's, i started to get little tiny flickers on the tip of the rod so I knew that something was out there. I was just waiting for it to actually pull on the line so that I knew I had the hook in its mouth. Anyway, shortly after that, I struck into it and I'd hooked my first carp. So it wasn't the biggest fish around. I estimated this is around about two to three kilos, but at least it was a start. So I was happy about that. And maybe I could do better in this one session. I'll just see what I could do. I put another worm on the hook and then cast in. And about a minute later, I was into another fish. So I'd, Obviously, what I'd done is got the fish into the spot, maybe just by throwing out little bits of uh, corn and the occasional worm in there. So I had something else. This was really good. Didn't feel that big though, so I wasn't going to break any records with this one, but at least I had another fish. As I fought this fish, I made a real rookie mistake. I bought it in. The fish seemed to have given up. I seemed to have won the fight, which was great. And as I was reaching down to pick it up, I let the line go slack. So I was gonna pull the line in and the fish got away. Well, I lost that fish, but look, I wasn't too concerned. It uh, was probably the same size, if not even a bit smaller than the first one that I caught. So I wasn't worried in losing that. I was happy that the techniques I'd used uh, had worked in that I could get a couple of fish in that spot. As with most of my videos, I only fish for a couple of hours at a time because that's all the available time that I have. So that was quite good. The next round is going to be slightly different rigs, slightly different baits, the same spot. So look, if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you're interested in the gear, the techniques, go to my website, howtofish.com.au. See you then.